Hi, my name is Allison Monda. I'm a firefighter with Gig Harbor Fire and Medic One. Today on Fleet Friday, we are going to show you the brush rig. This is brush 52 uh, out of station 52. It's a Chevy Kodiak 4x4 2009. Uh, as you know, we've had a pretty crazy uh, wildland season this year. Gig Harbor has a wildland team. We deploy all over the Pacific Northwest uh, this particular resource to help out with communities that don't have enough resources at the time. We had a deployment in Oregon that this rig actually just came back from yesterday. And then we also uh, did a deployment up in OMAC and near Yakima this year that I was involved. So we're going to go through the entire rig today and hopefully answer any questions that people have about this beautiful rig. We'll start off in the cab. In the front, you can see we have a bunch of different radios here, one for in the cab so we can talk to each other while we're driving. And then we have a bunch of other radios here that we can use while we are away from the rig so that we can still have communications between each other and between our strike team leader. In the back here, we have a bag that has a bunch of different resources for uh, state mobilizations, as well as tools. So for instance, this tool here would help us uh, understand the weather patterns and how fast the wind is blowing. Uh, that way we can keep our group safe and let other people on the fire know um, the changing conditions. All right, Get to some of the fun stuff. In here, we have all of our wildland packs. Some of us own our own. Um, and then if we have people that don't, we supply them. So there's a bunch of packs in here for people to use. Uh, this is where we have our fire shelters. Pull one out. So they're worn around the waist. This is a fire shelter. So if you were in a situation where the fire was coming too quickly and you weren't able to get out, then you would deploy the shelter and get inside of it. We also have a lot of medical equipment. Um, as you know, wildland, fire is pretty dangerous so we keep uh, an extensive medical bag here for any situation that we would have for either our crew or for people that we come across. Down here we have progressive lay backpacks. So we would use these if we need to hike far away from the rig and deploy a hose line. So we would put a bunch of different hoses in here or a couple of hoses in here and what's called inline T and nozzles. And we could build a line off of that around the fire, away from the rig. In these cabinets, we just have a bunch of adapters and nozzles. The hoses that we use are called quarter turn hoses. So these are adapters for those and adapters for toy hoses. This is what the quarter turn hoses look like. Um, the other rigs on our strike team and the rigs in the area use the same hose. That way we can all work together and use the same hose and build off of each other's hose lines. So we have inch and a half and inch hoses in here. Uh, this is a bucket uh, of tools that we can use to make up a hydrant if we need to do that to fill up the, the tank in here. The tank is 420 gallons and that's on the top. In here we just have a bunch of odds and ends. These are flares if we're doing some, some burnout. Uh, we have towels in here. In here we have flagging and then just extra food, coffee. Very important, probably the most important thing on the rig. So you may notice that the hose lines on this rig are a little bit smaller than a regular structural engine. The reason for that is we do, we use a lot less water on a, a wildland fire than we would typically a house fire. And this is different for every fire, but typically uh, when you are out in the middle of nowhere, we just don't have the resources to use as much water as we would like. So we do a lot of digging around a fire um, and turning over the soil instead of using water. Coming around the back, we have more hose in here to use. This is called a booster line. This is really great for a quick attack because we can just deploy this, put out a spot fire, and then immediately roll it back up as opposed to having to individually roll all these hose lines depending on how long we've had to build the line. So great resource. Also use this if we are driving along the side of a road and putting out a fire, someone can um, walk along the side of the rig and spray water while the driver is moving. So we can put out the fire a little bit quicker that way. On the back, we have hard suction hose. We can use this if we're going to do a draft operation. 
we would draft when we wouldn't when there aren't any hydrants in the area so if there is a lake or a pond we can drop one of these uh, hard suction hoses into that and suck the water up into our pump and use the water that way on the top of the rig we have some compartments for uh, more equipment we have tents and pads that kind of stuff uh, when you're on a wildland deployment you don't get put up in a hotel most of the time typically you're camping on a like a high school football field so if someone forgets a tent or someone else needs another tent uh, we have extras up on top some of the differences between wildland firefighting and structural firefighting a lot of wildland firefighting is protecting exposures because we don't have a lot of water to work with so a lot of what we're doing is preparing structures before the fire gets there so making a more defensible space for when the fire arrives if it does arrive then we have tools to dig line to prevent the fire from going over that and we also have the tools actually over here um, to do what's called burnout. This is called a drip torch. Um, this is one of our cooler tools on the rig. This is used when we need to do burnout. So if we are in a position, for instance, uh, where the fire is coming towards us, but it's taking a really long time, if we have the ability to dig a line and burn out to the fire that saves us time from sitting and waiting for the fire to come to us and watching to see if embers cross the line to do burnout there are a lot of conditions that need to be favorable the relative humidity um, the exposures and uh, the wind are all things that we take into consideration this is what the drip torch looks like set up so how you'll use it is you will light the end of it and then the fuel will drip onto the flame here and actually drop it onto the fuel that you are trying to burn out. Coming around the side here, we have the pump panel right here. So this is how we run the pump. The pump is directly behind here. When we want to put foam on the fire, um, we can turn the foam on right here. Foam helps break, uh, break down the surface area of water, and so it really helps um, the water absorb into the fuels. Because science. Uh, in here, we have a couple chainsaws. We have um, a little pump. This is a smaller pump we can use. Let's say we can use it in a creek or a small pond or a pool. Uh, another, just another way to get water into the tank here. And we have chainsaws back here and then just a bunch of fuel and socket. In this compartment, we have all of our hand tools. So we've got shovels. This is called a McLeod. It's basically a rake that you can also use the other side to cut with and drag material. Um, a hoe, and then we also have um, Pulaski, which is kind of the tool you think of when you think of wildland. Um, it's basically, uh, it has a cutting side and also has a digging side. Both can be used to, to cut roots though. We also have a weed eater up top. Um, it's not necessarily the hero tool, but sometimes we have to cut back brush and it's a great tool for that. Thank you for watching. Uh, again, this is the brush rig. Uh, it's been on deployments this summer and we've actually used it a lot within district as well. It's been able to help out a lot of communities here in Washington and in Oregon. And it's been a pleasure to have you today. Cause science.